Hello and welcome to the Week Ahead video with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Thursday the 12th of July and the time has just gone 12.20 British Summer Time. And we are looking ahead to next week which, is, which begins Monday the 16th of July until Friday the 20th of July. Taking a look at the major economic indicators uh, that, are t that are due out next week, on Monday we have Chinese GDP, fixed asset investment and industrial production. Uh, the, the kind of wider picture has been that Chinese growth has cooled greatly uh, since between 2010 and 2016. And since 2016, the Chinese economy has kind of plateaued a lot, growing, uh, growing in around the kind of 6.7, 6.8, 6.9% region. And that's what we're expecting out of, out of China in the latest second quarter GDP numbers. It's also worth pointing out that the that the, 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 the tariffs that have, been, that have been imposed on the United States are unlikely to make an actual impact on this reading in terms of GDP and also fixed asset investment and industrial production. But future uh, readings could be impacted by the tariffs. As of this week, there's also talk uh, that President Trump is going to impose another $200 billion worth of tariffs against Chinese imports in August. Uh, that could also, like I said, could also have an impact on Chinese economic indicators at the back end of this year. Uh, looking ahead to Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, we have the UK unemployment rate and average earnings on Tuesday and the UK CPI rate on Wednesday. Uh, unemployment in the UK is at, at, at the levels not seen, sorry, last, last seen since the 1970s. We are talking multi-decade lows, so any kind of increments uh, in any other direction of, say, 0.1% isn't really going to make a whole lot, lot of a difference. Traders are really going to be focusing on the average earnings figures. And in the last number of months, uh, the average earnings in the UK has been growing faster than that of the inflation rate, the cost of living rate, which is obviously good uh, because this actually boosts uh, income in, in real terms and allows for an increase in, in, in disposable income. And the more consumers spend, by frankly, the better for the British economy. Uh, it's also worth pointing out uh, that, that the slide in the, the inflation rate uh, in the past few months is likely to be assisted uh, by, the, by the firming up of the pound on the back of the most recent Bank of England meeting. Three of, of the policymakers have voted in favour of a rate hike, which gave the British pound a bit of a boost. Uh, Andy, Andy Holiday, the Bank of England's chief economist, was one of those, one of those three members who voted for a rate hike. And Mr Holiday did this, actually put a flaw on the pound and essentially uh, put a stop to the kind of import inflation uh, that, that the UK has been going through uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, speaking with the keep, keeping with the inflation theme, uh, moving on to Wednesday, we have inflation figures from the eurozone. Uh, that the flash figure for June uh, came in at two percent, which is the ECB's uh, target. That's the headline inflation figure I'm talking about. Uh, it was the highest reading since February 2017, but it's fair to say that a lot of the of the increase in inflation of the he in the headline figure has been down with the surge in the oil price. But it is also worth pointing out that the core figure, which strips out commodity components, is also at a multi-month high. So it shows that there's a genuine increase in demand, which is the, in, in the eurozone, which is obviously the, the which is obviously something that central bankers at the Euro, at the European Central Bank want to see. Uh, speaking, keeping again with the inflation theme, uh, Canadian inflation is due out on, on Friday, uh, and essentially the headline figure has cooled ever so slightly since hitting a three-year high in February. But the actual core figure, which trips out commodity components, has been broadly rising for, for the last you know nine, ten, about ten or eleven months. It's also worth pointing, remembering that the Bank of Canada uh, raised rates yesterday, and it was their second interest rate hike in 2018. And it goes to show that the, that the Canadian economy is continued to grow, and demand is, uh, is respectable. It's also a way for the Bank of Canada to actually kind of keep up uh, with the Federal Reserve in terms of rate hikes throughout 2018. In terms of corporate stories, on Monday we have second quarter figures from Netflix. Uh, on Tuesday, we have second quarter earnings from Goldman Sachs. And on Thursday, we have full-year figures from Sports Direct. So I'd like to take a look at some of the major markets, uh, more popular markets, and see as in terms of uh, price action what we can expect. So as you can see here, after the FTSE 100 hit, a, hit an all-time high in May, we have seen a bit of a cooling in terms of the price action. And things are still looking a bit tense, given the, the trade standoff between the US and China. Uh, we obviously gained a considerable amount of ground between March and May, and we've given, given some of that ground up. But it is worth pointing out, we could be in the beginning uh, of a downward trend. And a downward trend is defined as a series of lower lows and lower highs. And if you look here, after the, the all-time high of May, we then had a, a lower low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high. And notice that the market didn't really get get, get beyond this level here, 7,700. And while we remain south of it, the, the, the outlook might remain a, uh, a bit on the negative side. And if we do push, push to the downside, 
we could be looking at targeting the late June low of 7,482. And if we go beyond that, we could be heading back down towards this yellow line here at the one day moving average at 7,438. If we do manage to clear 7,700, that'll be, that'll be positive for the FTSE 100. And if we have a size of a break north of it, we could be looking at tar then targeting the mid June high of 7,794. Uh, the chart market, the DAX, is also. Uh, looking a bit on the shaky side, seeing as that Germany, uh, the German manufacturing sector could be in the firing line should Donald Trump actually ramp up his rhetoric against the EU in terms of actually the, the in, in trade talk. At the moment, things are, are still looking a bit more a, a bit a bit more positive than they are in uh, in regard to say Chinese uh, trading relationships with the, with the US, but that could all change uh, in in one tweet. Uh, as you can see here, um, if you take a look at the price action in the DAX since the middle of June, uh, we saw a steady, a steady uh, sell-off uh, in, in June. Uh, support was found in on this area here at 12,123. The market did manage to bounce back and regain some of the losses, but the market has turned over on itself again. Um, this area here, 12,600 region, that has been acting, acting as a very decent level of both support and resistance recently. So. While we remain south of that, the outlook might remain negative uh, for the share market. Uh, if we, uh, so if we, if we continue to, to push lower from here, we could, we, we could look ahead and back down towards 12,250 or lead back down to the, uh, the, the recent lows of 12,123. If you do manage to have a decent break north of 12,600, that area there, we could be looking at targeting the, this red line here, the opportunity moving average which comes into play at 12,781 and if we go beyond beyond that we could be looking at it back up towards 13,000. Take a look now at the S&P 500. S&P 500 has held up um, reasonably well, consider what's going on in terms of the, the trade negotiations and, and the standoff uh, between the United States and Beijing. The broad picture is that ever since uh, since April, the S&P 500 has been in an upward trend. Uh, we've seen this, a series of both higher highs all along here and also higher lows. So broadly speaking, in an upward trend. In fact, we're not too far away. We're pretty much on the June high here. So if we continue to push on higher, we could be looking at targeting uh, a high not, a level not seen since early, since early March, uh, which is 2,800. And if we do manage to take out 2,800, that, that would then be uh, putting us on target. Uh, to, head, head to these levels here in around 2,835. Um, if you do manage to drift lower, we may find some support coming to play in around the 50 day moving average, this blue line here, which comes to play at 2,737, or perhaps in, indeed here at the uh, also at the yellow line, the 100 day moving average, which comes to play at 2,709. Take a look now at what's going on in the, uh, the gold market. Gold has been under pressure recently, uh, given the kind of in, the, the given the sell, given the, the rally or the firmness in the U.S. dollar. Uh, U.S. dollar is a kind of strong uh, inverse relationship between the two markets. And as you can see here, uh, gold hit a multi-month low, uh, six-month low, uh, only only at the at beginning of this month, and, and the market appears to be turning over on itself yet again. If you take off this low here of 12.36, we can be looking heading back down towards um, 12.04, um, a level not seen since 11 not seen since july of last year so we're you know we're approaching the previous six month the low which which is which was a six month low and we could very easily be looking at a one year low quite, quite shortly on gold if the gold market does manage to rebound from here i managed to take out uh, this this level here the most recent high uh, of 1265 beyond that we could be looking heading back up towards 1284 and then beyond that we could be looking heading back up towards 1300 but the, the trend is very much in a, a downward mode mode at the moment Take a look now at the uh, the euro versus the US dollar. So the, the, the single currency started losing a lot of ground versus the, the, the US dollar between April and May. We've managed to find fairly decent support from this area here in at one spot, 15.10. Um, while we, we remain north of that, I think I think we, we could see um, we could see a continue, we could see a further buy come into play, but notice how this pushback here didn't actually manage to take off the most the um, the, the most recent the, the the mid June high of one spot 85 85 
one spot 18.51. If you can't manage to get above that area, I suspect we could be in a bit of a of a trend, a, a in a bit of a range here. Uh, it's, it's fair to say support is decent in at one spot 15.10, but also the recent high um, failed to take off this area here at one spot 18.51. So we could be looking at being a bit range bound on the euro versus the US dollar. A break north of this area here at one spot 18.51 could put us on, on track uh, to test the big psychological number at 120. And a move south of this area here at one spot 15.10 could set us back down towards uh, 114. And lastly, now taking a look at the pound versus the US dollar. Service duration here, we saw a fairly steady decline in the pound versus the US dollar since April. We haven't really had the same level of support uh, coming to play uh, that, that, that the euro has versus the, the US versus the compared with the British pound. It's still very much in a downward trend, as you can see here lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We have seen the market. Uh, managed to bounce back here and the high here to be fair to it did actually manage to take off this high here but we're still very much in a downward trend and it will appear that the 50 day moving average this blue line here at one spot 33 35 is acting as resistance and while we remain south of that if the outlook uh, could remain negative and if we, if, if we manage to push uh, push lower from here we could look at actually t retesting the recent low of one spot 3049 and if we go south of that we could be looking heading towards 130 the figure itself well that's all for me this week thank you very much